You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. Greetings, Earthlings. You're listening to the Pro Wrestling Mothership Network. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Pro Wrestling Mothership Network Hall of Fame specials that we have been putting on here on the Pro Wrestling Mothership website. And we have had a bunch of interviews over the last week or so. If you haven't, please go over to ProWrestlingMotherships.com for all the interviews that we have done. We have done a ton of them, so please feel free to the website. Check them all out. Uh, tonight, Mr. Grigg and I are joined by the one and the only, the juice box hero, Tyler Jones. Mr. Jones, how you doing, sir? I'm I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, guys. It's a blast talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to get you back, juice you know. Juice box hero. Yeah, it's good to get you back. Last time we talked to you was just after you won the Luthes Cup Memorial Battle Royal last year in Waterloo. Right, yeah. And this year, I'm wrestling for the heavyweight title. It's been a crazy journey looking back at it. Uh, go ahead, Zach. Absolutely, you know it's um it's been quite the year that you've had. You know you won the you won the Luthes Memorial Battle Royal. You've just done all sorts of things. You've created a new tag team with Austin Fouts called Flex Appeal. I mean, kind of just talk back about man how the year has been for you since we last talked to you. Uh, it's been really busy, like you said. Um, me and Austin have been working together as a tag team. We've been traveling all over the Midwest. We've been super busy doing that with IPW. Uh, I've been kind of, I was defending my vault title, just lost it to Maddie Starr. Uh, added fuel to the fire of our little feud. And I got a little bit of more incentive to bring it at Hall of Fame. A- absolutely. Absolutely. You guys have, you guys have had some wars from, the, the vault title match this past uh, afternoon in Algona. Uh, you guys have had some wars in, in, in Des Moines at the Forte Center. I'm really looking forward to that, that title match. Uh, you know, uh, how cool is it? And I know you've talked a little bit, but how cool is it, you know, to be involved in, in, in the Hall of Fame weekend and Luth has come around battle roll this year to be in the World Heavyweight title, being the main event of uh, one of the biggest shows of, of Impact Pro Wrestling schedule for the year? Uh, you know, it's really cool. I feel like it. Uh, really speaks volumes to uh, what Troy kind of thinks of me and all that to put me in that spot. But yeah, looking at that journey from here, wrestling for the heavyweight title last year, winning the Blue Test Battle Royal, the year before making it to the final four in the Battle Royal, and then the year before that, I was at the Hall of Fame show as a fan before I even trained in anything. So it means a lot to me. It's it's definitely been quite the journey for you, my man, and we're getting ready here for the huge Hall of Fame show that's happening next week. I, ca- I want to talk to you, though, about what's been going on here that began, you know, this past Monday. You got, you're starting fair season. You know, as everybody who has followed Impact Pro Wrestling, they pretty, you guys pretty much do a two-week stretch of where it's just, you know, straight fair shows right, leading right up to Hall of Fame weekend. 
Yes, we do. It's been so busy and, um, good thing. Everyone's really good buddies with each other. Otherwise I think we'd be out of each other's throats <laughs> for these two weeks. But, uh, yeah, we've been, uh, there in uh, Muscatine tonight, uh, winter set from Thursday to Sunday. And then, yeah, Bill won the heavyweight championship. I don't know if you guys saw that. We yeah, we, yeah, we so. did see that. So uh, at some point, man, it's either gonna t- you're you're you gotta hope that the powers that be either make your match now at the Hall of Fame a triple threat, or somehow Maddie gets a rematch between now and next fr- next Friday, where you can you and Maddie can have your one on one match for the title. Right. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And you know that that is the thing with. When you do these fair shows leading leading up, there is always that old that old saying: "Cards subject sub, subject to change." <laughs> That's right. Now, I, t- t- no, I don't I don't mind beating up ugly though either. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, especially with you know ugly getting ready to call it quits. We uh, talked with him last week right here on the Pro Wrestling Mothership Network, and you know the one I kind of want you to take us back to. Uh, last night, though, in Des Moines, the Hall of Fame qualifier. How was that night for you from what it sounded like and from what it looked like? It looked like it was a just fantastic night of, of wrestling action. And the winner of the tournament was, you know, won the right to compete in the Hall of Fame Classic Tournament and go on to face uh, a very tough competitor in Austin Aries. Uh, that's right. It was a fantastic night of wrestling. Uh, James Jeffries came out victorious. A little disappointing night for me. Uh, me and Maddie in the first round uh, came down to the wire. Uh, ten minute time limit, but he beat me with seconds to spare Ugh. with that super kick. Ugh. And, and you were my pick to win it, man. You were my pick to win it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I let you down. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's okay. I just expect big things out of you coming here next weekend at the uh, next Friday at the Hall of Fame show. <laughs> No, uh, Tyler, speaking of maybe if somebody's first time coming to the Hall of Fame as a fan, do you have any tips for him? I know you said the your first year you, you attended as a fan. Is there any kind of tips you would give to a pro wrestling fan coming to the Hall of Fame weekend, something to make the weekend more enjoyable for them? Um, I'd say uh, just check out like all the activities they have because they have stuff going on all weekend at the museum. We get a bunch of stuff going on at the venue. We got the the eval matches, then we got the actual show. So there's so much stuff. Just keep an eye out for everything. Now, is there is there uh, obviously wrestling on the 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 card on Friday night is pretty pretty uh, huge accomplishment. Is is there another part of the weekend that's your favorite to to get to take part in uh, during the Hall of Fame weekend? Oof. Um. Well, the eval. The Eval was always fun, nice learning experience. Uh, yeah, that, and then just being around with all those people that I love spending so much time with, my PW family, you know? And Absolutely. And you meet all those other legends and stuff that you've looked up to for so long. And, and it's and, just kind of, kind of yeah. weird seeing them in person. That, 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 is, that is for sure. And uh, that's the cool thing about the weekend I, I want to stress a little bit is that everyone is so accessible from the legends to the to the IPW roster uh, to everyone as part of the weekend. You can definitely get to meet them, greet them, talk to them, uh, hear some of their great stories. Uh, that's what makes the weekend so amazing. Right, exactly. Now, kind of, you know, as um, over the years that you've taken part in the Hall of Fame weekend, um, if I remember right, you did do the evaluation process last year, right? I did, yes. Kind of, I wrestled uh, Ray Fearing. I kind of talk a little bit about that experience and the feedback that you received because whenever you guys get done with the evaluation, you're, you guys always get the feedback from um, Gerald Briscoe and I believe last year was uh, J.J. Dillon as well. So kind of talk a little bit about your experience doing that last year. Uh, it's a good experience. Uh, they give you a lot of eye-opening information of what uh, the WWE is actually looking for, you know. Uh, feedback from people that are uh, been there, they know what they're looking for. Yeah, uh, they give you tips and tricks, uh, kind of tell you what you need to make it to the next level. 
And for and for you last year, what was I guess your biggest takeaway from it? Uh, I need to get bigger. I need to get huge. I need to <laughs> bump more weight. I'm putting. I'm working hard now. I need to work way harder times twenty. So I, I'm, assu- I get, so. I'm, ass- I'm assuming you're taking part of the in the evaluation here uh, next weekend as well. Yes, sir. So, so I guess you know for when you look back at what you've done last year, are you and compared to where you are this year? Would you say you're more confident heading into it this year as opposed to this time last year? I would definitely say that. I feel like this past year I've grown so much, and I would uh, attribute that to all the traveling that Austin and I have done. We've been all over the Midwest. I've been to Canada a couple times. Nice. Right. Just gaining that experience over the years helped me be confident in the ring and my abilities. Yeah. And I feel like I've kind of uh, found who I am, too, in the ring a little bit. Now that now that you've got out on the road, Amore, uh, is there any good road stories you could tell us? Anything that that, that stands out that that been interesting on a road trip you've had to a to a new wrestling organization or on any of your trips here that that, that you guys are really venturing out more this past year? Oof. Anything you could tell, at least. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I don't really have anything good. I don't think. I think it's all just kind of boring. <laughs> Being on the road kind of boring. <laughs> well, you know, to cure that boredom, man. What do you guys? What are you guys listening to in the car? There, I mean, like, what? There's uh, thousands of wrestling podcasts out there, and and tons of different other podcasts out there. So when you and Austin hit the road together, what are you two listening to? Austin, Austin's a connoisseur of his rap trap music. <laughs> we listen to a lot of Little Pump, uh, Cardi B. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of these people. I've heard, I've heard a, Car- a Cardi B before. I've heard I've heard the name. Nope. So. I don't know none of that. <laughs> <laughs> so Austin Austin will blast that and will listen to the same song about twenty times on a road trip, and I want to strangle his neck by the end of it. <laughs> and, uh, and then to top it off, you have to go and be in the ring with this guy as your tag team partner. Right? Yeah, We're, we get end up hating each other by the end of the weekend for sure. <laughs> Now, kind of look, at, kind of moving over to you know today's product. Is there anybody in today's like current product that you, really stands out to you that you would say is one of your favorites that you really enjoy watching? You know, whether that be from you know WWE, Ring of Honor, uh, Impact Wrestling, or even somebody that you've seen on the independent scene that people might not be aware of because like, you have done some traveling, like you said, over the last year. So who's who for you has really stood out? Uh, kind of on the local independence, uh, Fantasma Fuego. I don't know if you guys have seen him. Yep, we've, I've, I've seen him. He's, uh, he's definitely an interesting character, that's for sure. Right, he is absolutely one of my favorites to watch. I enjoy his performances so much. I'm bust, bust out laughing so much. <laughs> um, probably on TV, uh, I'm really excited for Rey Mysterio to come back if he comes back. Uh, Jeff Hardy, of course, is a favorite. Randy Orton, I love Randy Orton. He's just so smooth in the ring, you know. Absolutely, man, absolutely. Now, as you're as you're moving forward here towards, you know, Hall of Fame, is there anything that you're doing, you know, I guess I guess differently to prepare because it is it's the biggest show of the entire year. It's the WrestleMania for Iowa Independent Professional Wrestling. The crowd every year, I feel like, is getting just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Is there any? Is, does your mindset go somewhere different that it doesn't normally go for, you know, the Des Moines show or the Algona show or, you know, even even some of these fair shows? Uh, right now it has not, but I'm sure like the day of I'm going to be crapping my pants. I'm going to be so nervous, <laughs> I bet. But right now I'm trying to treat it just like any other show just because I don't want to uh, lose my mind about it, you know. But I'm for sure dieting harder, training harder in the gym and stuff like that, but I'm trying to treat it like any other show right now just because I feel like I'll go crazy otherwise. That's, that's probably the best best um, best advice there for you. Has has anybody that hasn't been on this show yet, you know, because there are going to be some new newcomers here that haven't shown up to wrestle at the Hall of Fame weekend. Has anybody come up to you and asked kind of your, like, your advice, or if they haven't, what would you say to them if somebody came up to you 
asking your advice on how to handle this show because it is different. It's like I said, it's huge, and it's probably gonna be one of the biggest shows that people wrestle in front of all year. Right. Um, advice I'd have, I'd say, um, realize that's a big deal. Give it your all, but uh, oof, I don't know. Asking the wrong guy. <laughs> uh, right there are some eyes on you here at the show they're promoters that come from around the midwest they come to the show so it's a big it could be a big deal it could be a big launching pad for you uh give it your all it's all i got can say i think absolutely now i, I want to ask you uh i want to put you on the spot actually uh, I, w- I want to know your pick for the Hall of Fame Classic this year. We know last year it came down to Chuck Taylor and Shane Strickland, and Chuck Taylor won and was the inaugural winner of the Hall of Fame Classic. Uh, this year we have Austin Aries versus James Jeffries. We have uh, Brian Cage versus Kurt Stallion. We have Airwolf versus DJZ. I- I'm I- D- DJZ. And we have Bob Holly and Cole Cabana. Uh, who do you got? Who do you think is going to win there, Tyler? Um, I think it will be Hardcore Holly and Brian Cage in the finals. Yeah. I feel like that'd be awesome. That would be. Oh, that, feel, that that just yeah. sounds painful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I bet I will put my money on Bob Holly because he's got the ring savvy. He's a little more experience. And and you know, for Bob, it's kind of a hometown show for him. I think he lives over in the Dubuque or Davenport area, so it's really not that far for him either. So you can kind of, in a way, say that it's a hometown show for him. Oh, nice. So, uh, you know, I, I tell you what, I'm looking forward. I, I like your pick there. That would be a hard-hitting um, b- battle in the finals. I'm looking forward to the rematch from Bob Holly and Cole Cabana. They fought a few years ago at the... Uh, at the Hall of Fame show in Waterloo. As long as they don't uh, land in your lap, right, Zach? Right, right, absolutely. Because <laughs> Cabana landed in my lap that year. but uh, <laughs> I, I, And then he, he, he sat there for a while. Anyhow, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed their match last time, so I look forward to seeing that again. And I think it's going to be re- re- really cool to see what Airwolf and DJZ can put together. And, and, and I think Stallion and Brian Cage is going to be fantastic. And obviously Austin Aries and James Jeffries is going to be an amazing, amazing match. Aries has been killing it everywhere since he left WWE back on the independent scene, working at the Impact Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Uh, I think so. they they might have a little history back from way back in Algona. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I want to say um, Anthony Draven and Austin Aries won the IPW tag titles and they wrestled James and someone, but I might be wrong there. I might be totally off the wall wrong, but that sounds right. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a stacked, stacked tournament this year. It's, um, you know, it's only the second year of the tournament. And again, already this year is stacked even more so than the first year. Now out of all the matches, and I'm going to kind of, I'm going to run down the card here for you, Tyler, cause I'm sure you don't know it off the top of your head. Uh, obviously, the big show Friday night, we're going to have the finals and the semifinals. You got the retirement match between Ugly and Aaron Von Baron. You have the TLC Women's Title Invitational, which right now is uh, Miss Frankie J versus Sierra Avery versus Brooke Valentine, which was supposed to be and hopefully still will be. There's still time. Uh, Maddie Starr versus you for the IPW Heavyweight title. Uh, as of now, Maddie Starr does not have the title. Uh, that could have that could have changed, though, by the time we have released this interview, so... Who, who who knows? <laughs> um, card is subject. Maybe they'll put my vault title on the line. There you go. There you go. Card is subject to change, so there there is always that you have to little little blurb you have to include. Um, you have the IPW tag team title fatal four way: the Stud Club versus Malice and West Briscoe versus Harry Smith and the loser of the Aries and James Jeffries match. So whoever loses that match still gets a chance to get capture some gold later in the evening, facing one more team that's to be announced. The Legends Lumberjack match, Ryan Slade, your boy Austin Fouts, and Sparrow versus the big picture Ashen Christopher, Justin Decent, and Nathan Edwards. And then, of course, you got the Luth Best Cup Battle Royal already announced. You got B. Brian Blair, Roy Fox, and Jimmy Wilde, plus 17 others yet to be announced. So out of everything that I just ran down for you here, Tyler, what are you most looking forward to outside of your own match? Uh, probably Ugly and Aaron Von Baron. Just because, who knows, maybe I might shed a tear during that match. I might get a little emotional. Yeah. They'll, uh, they'll help train me, had a hand in training me. 
Yeah, you know, it's last year we saw Tony Sly retire, which was, again, unfortunate. Uh, I was saying to Ugly when we had him on last week that I hope this doesn't start to become a trend here at the Fall Hall of Fame where some of our favorite <laughs> favorite independent wrestlers are starting to call it quits. Like, I, I don't want that to be a theme. I mean, but what better way than to go out at the Hall of Fame show? But I, I don't want it to be a trend. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think I'm looking forward to, uh, I'll probably be watching the Luthez Battle Royal too because it's near and dear to my heart. Absolutely. I mean, you being the defending cup winner and, you know, who knows? Why not just throw your hat in there again and go after go after it again? You know, do, you can do two matches in one night. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'll get the luck of the draw and you'll draw the final number in the Battle Royal. Then that, then that obviously evens the odds of your chances, right? I like that. I like your idea. Um, who knows? <laughs> now, now I, I do want to ask you, you were talking about all these matches, Zach. Um, when you're preparing for your big match like this at the Hall of Fame, do you do you take the time, do you get the opportunity to watch some of these other matches, or are you more into getting into go mode uh, for your big match? Um, A lot of the times I'm more just getting into go mode. It, yeah, I'd say nine times out of ten I'm getting in the, in the go on that, what you said. But now, every once in a while I'll be able to catch like a match or two way before me. Now, do you have any kind of, like, uh, rituals or any kind of thing, show day, that you have to do this certain way uh, going into a match? Uh, I got to make sure I got my tanner on. I got to make sure I'm nice and tan. I got to have my pre-workout. I usually have my pre-workout, especially for these big matches. Uh, I'll do a bunch of stretching. I do the kind of like the Brock Lesnar, how he does the bouncing around. I do that a lot before I go out. Now, now when you get done, much virtual. Now, when you get done with the night, what's going to be your, if you have one, what's going to be your go-to cheat meal? What are you going to go dive into? Because obviously you've been prepping hard for this night. You gotta, you gotta go out and celebrate a little after. Ho- hopefully, hopefully celebrate with the IPW Heavyweight Title. Right. I don't know. I don't know if I'll have time to celebrate the. We gotta keep going. We got a show in Minnesota the next day. Austin and I, and then we're in. Uh, Sioux City, Nebraska, Sunday. Oh, geez. It's go, go, go. Wow, so you definitely aren't going to have much time to relax, are you? No, not at all. I think we're, um, it's Austin, myself, and Jimmy Wilde are going to Minnesota the next day. Very cool, very cool. And Austin and I, the Nebraska. Very cool, very cool. Now, guys, if you still want tickets for next week's shows, uh, tickets for ringside tickets for the first four rows are $25. General admission are 15. Call the Rustling, Dan Gable Wrestling Museum at 319-233-0745. Now, Tyler, before we let you go here for the evening, is there anything that you want to say to your opponent coming up here at the Hall of Fame show? Oof. Matty Starr, you took my vault title. I might take your heavyweight title, and then will things be a little more even. I'll see you at the Hall of Fame show. You know, you've been cheating all year. You've been... You beat some of the best in the Midwest, Ryan Slade. You beat James Jeffries. But that, all that's going to change at Hall of Fame. That's what I got to say. At, absolutely, it. absolutely, you guys. Again, big night next week, July 26th, 27th, and 28th in Waterloo, Iowa. Again, for tickets for the show or for the entire weekend, I believe there's still passes available. Feel free to call the museum. I'm going to give you the number one more time, 319 233 Oh seven four five. Now, Mr. Jones, we want to. I don't, we don't want to take up too much more of your time because we know you're a busy, busy man here over the next couple of weeks. So, hang on the line here with us real quick. But for now, guys, that's going to do it for what's us. Uh, what's up, uh, real quick, uh, Tyler? Get out your uh, social media where fans can keep keep up with you and and uh, where where they can check you out online. And okay. where and where promoters uh, can book you because promoters, you should book this man. Yeah, definitely. On uh, Instagram, you can just DM me. I'm at the really real Tyler Jones, and Twitter at the really real Ty. Uh, go ahead and like my Facebook page. The even the Austin and Tyler present Flex Appeal one. Give that a big like. You can just DM me anywhere for bookings. Absolutely, guys. There you have it. You heard it from the man himself, Tyler Jones. Big matchup coming up next week at the Hall of Fame show. Check him out. 
all week across the Midwest. He's going to be a busy, busy man. So be sure to like him on the social media because he's always updating of where he's going to be. So that's going to do it with this episode of the Pro Wrestling Mothership Mothership Hall of Fame. And we hope to see you guys in Waterloo next weekend. You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows, visit electronicmediacollective.com.